Ha <laughs> ha. So here we go. All right, so now in this case, I have y equals 1 half log base 6 of x minus 4 plus 2. And whenever I'm looking at a problem like this, I always wanted to kind of determine what are exactly my transformations? How am I shifting this graph from its original parent graph? Well, the x minus 4 is going to tell me I'm going to shift my graph 4 units to the right. And then the plus 2 is going to tell me to shift my graph. two units up, all right? So what I need to do is, oh, what am I shifting four units to the right and two units up from? So to do that, we want to graph our parent function, all right? And we also, then here's going to be our final graph. So our parent function, again, we're just going to take this without the transformations, it would be y equals 1 half log base 6 of x. Now, you can do it without the 1 half. Um, and then just take those points and multiply them by you know, your x values by 1 half if you want to. Um, but I like to leave this in here, because when I rewrite this in exponential form, what I like to do is divide by 1 half. So therefore, it's 2y equals log base 6 of x. Then when I write, rewrite this in expo exponential form, I have 6 raised to the 2y equals x. All right, and again, you don't have you can graph the parent function without the one half, and then just multiply each of those points. But then again, you're just doing more and more you know dilations, which I like to kind of get it out of the way. So now, what I want to do is create a table of values for this um, for this graph. So I'll have my x and my y's. And a lot of times, again, what I like to do when I'm choosing my x values is I want to choose when is x going to equal one, and when is x going to equal the base of six. So x equals 1, obviously, when 6 is raised to a power of 0. 6 is going to be raised to a power of 0 when y equals 0. Then I need to look at, well, when is x going to equal 6? That means this is going to be raised to a power of one, uh, up to 1. Well, 2 times 1 is going to leave me with 1 half. So when y equals 1 half, 1 half times 2 is 1. 6 raised to the first power is just going to equal 6. So now I have these two coordinate points that I'm going to want to graph, 1 comma 0. And then 6 comma 1 half. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up 1 half. So therefore, my graph's going to look something like this. It's going to have a very, very sharp turn. When looking at my, um, my graph, I know that my asymptote is at x equals 0. My domain is from 0 to infinity. And my range is from negative infinity to infinity. All right, and that's just the basis of understanding what the parent graph is going to be uh, looking like. But just notice on this graph it has a very, very sharp turn. But the main important thing what I want to do is take these points, and what I'm going to do now is now transfer these four units to the right. So instead of dealing with the point 1 comma 0, I'm now going to deal with the point 5 comma 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And instead of dealing with the point 6 comma 1 half, I'm now going to deal with um, a point 10 comma 1 half, so 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But now, instead, I'm not going to be shifting them now, or 6 comma 1 half. But now what's going to happen is I'm going to shift this graph also two units up. So let's say here's 1, here's 2. So therefore, and there would be 3. So up 2 would be now instead of at 0, now it's up to 2. And it started at 1 half, it's now going to be at 2 and a half. All right, now the next thing what I always like to do is draw the asymptote first. My asymptote was originally at x equals 0. That asymptote has now been moved to x equals 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, because the graph was shifted four units to the right. All right, so now I can graph this. And you can see it has this very, very sharp turn. And my two points, again, are um, 5 comma 2 and now 10 comma 2 and a half. All right, but now we need to understand that our domain and uh, range and asymptote have changed. Our asymptote is no longer at x equals 0. It was shifted four units to the right. So when I say my asymptote, now I can say x equals 4. My domain is from my asymptote to infinity. So that's going to be at from 4 to infinity. And my range, however, even though I shift it up or down, you can see that this graph is going to continue to rise and can continue to fall. So my range is from negative infinity to infinity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is a brief example on how to graph logarithmic functions equations. Thanks.